penny-pinching nerds, rejoice! For this is a season unbound by our bank accounts, unfettered by fees. A legendary age of liberty, this is the Summer of Free! Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Welcome back to another installment of our Summer of Free 2021 celebration. Uh, for each installment this year, I've been recommending at least one or two geek movies, one geek TV series, and one free console video game with single player appeal. A uh, lot to get through this time around, so let's get to it. First up, on Tubi TV, I want to recommend The Void. <laughs> <laughs> you might be thinking, oh, I'm having deja vu. Didn't Peter just glowingly review The Void this week or this episode of the podcast if you're listening and say that it's maybe one of his favorite horror movies of all time now? Yes. In fact, I uh, watched it to consider it specifically for the Summer of Free content this week and was so glad that I did. I think I can say without easily without exception, this is the, the movie that I have most enjoyed or been impacted by uh, while previewing movies to consider for the Summer of Free. There's Europa Report was another one that I discovered and discovered in quotes for this one because I had seen it before, I just forgot all about it. But rediscovering this one, oh my gosh. Uh, if you haven't listened to my other review, I'll just briefly say here, the synopsis on IMDb said, IMDb, <laughs> says, I think it said IMDb in their review too. Shortly after delivering a patient to an understaffed hospital, a police officer experiences strange and violent occurrences seemingly linked to a group of mysteriously hooded figures. Uh, yeah, this is a contender right now for my favorite horror, move, horror movie of all time. Lovecraftian, weirdness, body, gore, ho gore monster, horror type stuff. Watch my review or listen to it if you haven't already for more information. But anyway, The Void, you can get that at tubitv.com, T-U-B-I-T-V.com. Then over at imdbtv.com, uh, just for a limited time, you can watch Super 8. And this was one of the few back when I was giving scores to my movie reviews, one of the few back then that I think I gave a 10 to, um, Synopsis on IMDb, if you haven't watched this now already classic movie, is, in the summer of 1979, a group of friends in a small Ohio town witness a catastrophic train crash and soon suspect that it was not an accident. Shortly after, unusual appearances and inexplicable events begin to take place in town, and the local deputy tries to uncover the truth, something more terrifying than any of them could have imagined. I actually just watched this recently, a few weeks ago, um, with my boys for the first time, ages 10 and 13, about to be 11 and 14, and this was like the perfect fit to kind of introduce them at their age with their particular sensitivities and tolerances, introduce them to horror movies, to alien horror. You know, it was just intense enough, still intense with some of the big, explosive, shocking, surprising moments, uh, and also the menacing kind of monstery type stuff going on. Uh, it, it and, and I, you know, I watched it, well, let's see, I think my boys were really young when it came out, so I didn't have them in mind at all. But just as an adult viewer, I have long really enjoyed this movie. I think it can probably be credited with uh, kicking off the craze of recreating 80s movies involving kids. You know, I think Stranger Things owes a lot to Super 8. And so if you haven't seen this movie by some chance, or if it's been a while... It really held up well for me when I watched it again a few weeks ago for the first time in years. So that's Super 8. It's available at imdbtv.com. And then finally, just a little freebie. I wasn't going to include this, but I will anyway just for the heck of it. iRobot. This is the old Will Smith movie from the early 2000s, I want to say. Also on tubitv.com. Synopsis reads, in 2035, technophobic homicide... Homos, homos, homicide, excuse me, detective Del Spooner of the Chicago PD leads the investigation of the apparent suicide of leading robotic scientist Dr. Alfred Lanning. Unconvinced of the motive, Spooner's investigation into Lanning's death reveals a trail of secrets and agendas within the USR, United States Robotics Corporation, and suspicions of murder. Little does he know that his investigation would lead to uncovering a larger threat to humanity. So it's got, it's an action sci-fi movie with a lot of mystery thrown in as well. It's based on, I think, Philip K. Dick's work. 
and deals with questions of AI, and yes, it does try to build sympathy for AI characters. Usually I'm not into that, but on the whole, I would say this is a solid movie. Not like a great movie, one that I find really memorable, but, a, you know, kind of solid in that sense that, you know, pretty much every Tom Cruise sci-fi action movie is going to be a solid movie. You might forget it within two months after watching it, but it's going to be a solid experience. And that's what I remember thinking about iRobot. Again, that's available on 2BTV.com. Okay, now a couple of TV shows. The first, I don't think I've ever recommended this as part of the Summer of Free before, but over at 2BTV.com, which really is the front runner for uh, free legal uh, streaming content. Um, Highlander, the Highlander TV series. This is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, the synopsis on IMDb reads, Duncan MacLeod is immortal and must live in modern society, concealing his true nature while fighting other immortals. Taken from the film Highlander, Duncan MacLeod, clansman of Connor in the film, also finds he is being stalked by not only other immortals trying to kill him before the time of the gathering, but also a secret society of mortals who call themselves the Watchers and also seem intent on killing him, but the Watchers observe Observe and record and never interfere. Duncan and the other immortals can only be killed by decapitation and often live for centuries. If you are not familiar with this intellectual property that started in film and really, I think, hit its stride and really developed the lore in some major ways through the TV series, uh, this is a great way to put your toe in the water and check it out. I would also recommend um, finding some lists online of kind of like the essential Highlander TV series episodes. This has some through-line plot threads, um, but in the sense that, say, the X-Files did back in the day. It's not serialized. There are a number of episodes that you can watch out of order in a given season, but you couldn't watch the seasons out of order. It definitely has more continuity involved in it than, say, Star Trek The Next Generation from episode to episode. But uh, still, there are a lot that you could skip and that, you know, maybe don't hold up as well, uh, that, you know, you, you won't suffer for having missed them. And so I would recommend Googling somewhere the essential Highlander TV series episodes and then go over to 2BTV.com and check out the Highlander TV series. Also, by the way, they do have the first movie over there, which you can watch if you want. Watch out. Check out imdb.com for information. It does have some nudity in it. Um, but anyway, if you want, I, I don't think you need to watch that movie, actually, to, to get a proper introduction to Immortals and what this franchise is all about. You can start with the TV show, but if for some reason you kind of would feel weird to not start with that movie, then you can also watch that movie over at 2BTV.com. And then finally, in the realm of uh, TV shows, I'll recommend Andromeda. Having admittedly not seen the entire run of the show, I'd just seen a handful of episodes in the first season. It was one that when it was airing, just was competing with some other things uh, in my, uh, in my uh, available time, and so I never got around to really seeing it through to the end. But I did like and was curious about what I, you know, the rest of the series based on what I saw. But Andromeda uh, is, I think, based on notes from Gene Roddenberry for like a, a, a concept of a show that he never really developed. 2BTV.com is where you can find it. The synopsis on IMDb reads, Captain Dylan Hunt and the crew of the Andromeda Ascendant set out on a mission to rebuild the system's commonwealth 300 years after its fall. After being frozen in time for 300 years, Captain Dylan Hunt and his sentient warship Andromeda, a little bit of a Farscape overlap there, uh, sets out to restore peace and civilization to the known universe. With him is the crew of the ship that, with profit in mind and unknowing of her captain, and still being alive, salvaged Andromeda from the black hole, keeping her suspended in time. Andromeda originally hid in the black hole after a big battle. When Captain Hunt wakes up, he realizes that this battle was the beginning of an epic war, and that the great civilization he was defending, the Commonwealth, has been eradicated from existence for 300 years. He and his unlikely and sometimes unpredictable crew starts on a mission to once again bring hope to the galaxy. So, uh, if you want to check out, I think the last maybe original sci-fi show based on Gene Roddenberry's uh, work and his ideas. Of course, Star Trek has certainly seen a resurgence, but as Star Trek in, uh, in the TV world and even in the films was kind of petering out and dying out, they were kind of uh, milking some of his notes for shows like uh, Earth Final Conflict, and then Andromeda, I think, was the last of those based on notes that he had left behind and, and never uh, uh, produced himself. So uh, it's a, you know uh, interesting in that regard, and in others as well. It definitely has a different vibe than Star Trek, but still that 
post-utopian-ish, uh, you know, positivity that, uh, that his, uh, his other work is known for. Okay, now the console video game I'm going to recommend this time is Genshin Impact. You might have heard a little buzz about this one. It's available for PC and PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. It's got an 81 score on Metacritic, which is quite an accomplishment. That says something about uh, how widely this game is enjoyed. Now, I have to confess, although I had intended to make time to play this one so I could speak a little bit from my own experience with the game, uh, my schedule has just not allowed me to do that, uh, but uh, it's I'll, I'll share some thoughts of a few uh, uh, respected reviewers, and just you can just know you can do your own search on reviews. Uh, this game is really widely loved and embraced. Uh, it's an open world action RPG with an anime aesthetic style and other elements uh, that often lead it to be compared to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in a very, you know, uh, favorable and positive way. The description for the game reads Welcome to the beautiful fantasy world of Teyvat. Step into a huge open world of adventure and mystery where heroic quests await. As a traveler from another world, you must find your lost sibling and unravel Tevat's many secrets. Joined by Paimon, a kind-hearted sprite guide. It says sprite guide. I wonder if that's supposed to be spirit. I'm going to say sprite because that's what's written there. A kind-hearted sprite guide. Your mission takes you through beautiful forests, bustling towns, and treacherous dungeons. And while your journey may put you into the path of merciless foes and fiendish puzzles, you can count on numerous playable allies to join your custom party of four, harnessing the power of the elements to overcome all obstacles. Key features include explore Teyvat however you want. This is in many ways why it's compared to uh, Breath of the Wild. Fly across the open world, swim in a massive sea, climb mountains, and stray off the beaten path. Whether you decide to follow the storyline or just enjoy the gorgeous environment, Teyvat is yours to discover. Add up to four party members. Choose who fights by your side. With over 30 characters to meet and create your party with each possessing different abilities, personalities, and combat styles. Master the seven elements. Control and combine Pyro, Hydro, Electro, Anemo, Dendro, Cryo, and Geo to solve challenging puzzles and unleash powerful attacks. Travel alone or hunt together. Charge head-on into battles by yourself or invite your friends to join the fight against the dangerous monsters and discover Discover the secrets of this vast world together. So, uh, what I've seen in reviews is that it's very friendly both to single player and to people who don't want to pay a dime to play tons and tons of this experience. PlayStation Universe says, Genshin Impact provides you with more content as a free-to-play game than most full-price titles do. With so much to offer, you can easily get lost in its lush world, fun and exciting combat, and deep exploration. Genshin Impact is easily one of the best surprises of the year and should be a model for how future free-to-play titles should be constructed. And Twinfinite writes, Put aside your reservations about free-to-play mobile RPGs, gotcha mechanics, and weeby storytelling. Genshin Impact is totally unique. I came in a skeptic and now find myself genuinely relishing time spent chaining elemental combos, grinding for new characters, and the intrigue of its ongoing story. So again, that is Genshin Impact, which you are encouraged to check out if any of that sounds interesting to you. All right, we've got one more installment of the Summer of Free coming in a few weeks. That's all for now. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>